Good afternoon and welcome to the Seabreeze Church of Christ midweek lesson for October the 11th, 2023. Thank you for tuning in and I want to take just a few minutes and discuss with you making requests of God. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean to ask in Jesus' name? If you have your Bibles, turn to John chapter 14 and look at verses 9 through 14 as I read. John chapter 14, verses 9 through 14. Jesus said to him, Have I been so long with you, and yet you have not come to know me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father? And the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own initiative, but the Father abiding in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these he will do because I go to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Jesus knew the crucifixion was soon, so the Last Supper was an opportunity to impart final words of comfort to his and wisdom to his disciples. Now, one topic on his mind was prayer. Jesus told his friends, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. John chapter 14, verses 13 and 14. What, what does it mean to ask in Jesus' name? First, depend solely on Jesus' mediation. We became children of God when we confessed his name and were baptized for the remission of sins, acknowledged our helplessness, and trusted in Christ's atoning death on our behalf. If he acted as our mediator and reconciled us to the Father, 1 Timothy 2 verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator also between God and men, that man, Christ Jesus. If we want to pray for big or small things, Oh, we must continue in that same spirit of dependence on Christ. Second, seek Jesus' ongoing forgiveness. You know, sin remains in our world, and it really continues to distract us. So we must practice regular repentance. When we make mistakes, and we do, that means we confess sin to God, turn away from that attitude or behavior and receive God's forgiveness and his cleansing. First John chapter one, verse nine, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then, then we can approach him with a clear conscience. Third, offer a prayer that aligns with God's word. One way to think of this is to pray something Jesus himself might ask. Prayer is most effective when you and I fully rely on our Savior's sacrifice and his forgiveness and ask in his name. Remember, apart from him, apart from him, you can do nothing. John 15, verse 5, 
I am the vine, ye are the branches, and he who abides in me, and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, apart from me, you can do nothing. But with God, brethren, all things are possible. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26. And looking at them, Jesus said to them, with people, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Just something I think we need to think about and be grateful that we have the avenue of prayer and that we can talk with our Savior, and we should do it often, and to go to him and ask, whether it be great or small, or just to thank him for the many wonderful blessings that he bestows upon us. Go to him often in prayer, ask him to forgive us of our sins, and realize that if we repent of our sins and strive to do them no more, and try our best to live a Christian life and to follow after him. That if we have confessed his name and buried in baptism, that we will have eternal life. Isn't that a wonderful thing that we can talk with our Savior? Just something to think about the rest of the week. We appreciate so much your tuning in to our lessons. Hope and pray that you're sharing them with others in your family, your friends, neighbors, and helping us to spread the gospel of Christ. We would also love to have you come visit us at the Seabury Church of Christ. We have our Bible study at 9.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. We have worship service at 10.30 a.m. every Sunday morning. So if you can, please come visit with us. You'd be our honored guest, and we would love to get to know you and, and have you come visit us. If there's something you think that the Seabury Church might be able to help you with, please give us a call if we possibly can. We would like to do that. You can reach us at 270-823-2335. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope and pray that you have a great rest of the week, and may God bless you.